In each episode of the Wisdom Podcast, I share both spiritual and practical wisdom, together with the insights, offerings, and truth that have helped others live their greatness, conquer their fears, heal from the experiences of their past, be resilient, live empowered and free, and of course, of their authentic happiness. You may hear your own story and some of the stories of my clients who have healed themselves, become in control of their life, and reclaimed their authentic power. Seeking a deeper understanding and meaning of life awakens us to discover our purpose and to witness infinite beauty and joy that is so abundant. Each episode is meant to offer something beautifully relevant and timely for you. Let the sacred path that you are on be one that you choose deliberately, based on the inspired wisdom of your inner truth, and as you live a beautiful and love-filled life. Asteya is the third of the five yamas described in the Yoga Sutras. Asteya counsels us not to take or misuse what doesn't belong to us, and not to crave or be envious of what others have. When we look to others for something that we need, something that we desire, when we take from others in greed, in unwelcomed action, if we play on the attention that we may receive from someone or flirt with them in ways that create a false premise of our interest, if we take someone's possessions, their time, their energy, their ideas, all of these are situations that depict an absence of asteya. The root cause of asteya is I'm not good enough. The deeper meaning of asteya is beyond not stealing from others. It speaks to addressing the emptiness we feel within. The need to take and steal essentially arises because of a lack of faith in ourselves to be able to create what we need. The moment we feel a sense of lack in life, desire, want, and greed can arise. We begin to look for something to fill that empty sensation or void, and it can seem as though everyone else has what we want. According to the sages, without high self-confidence, we look for approval and attention from others. By doing this, we steal from our potential to be the best that we can be. When we doubt ourselves, when we say, I can't, and I don't know, these words halt our ability to look deeper for the answers that we hold within, and to make the effort first with, I could, I can, and I do know. Asteya becomes a reminder of how we can feel empty and avoid particularly if we look outside of ourselves for what we think we need or what we have been told we should be or have, rather than to reflect inward, to learn how to ask and then allow for our inner wisdom to answer. To help you practice an inner dwelling focus and to better ask and hear your inner wisdom, I have linked for you a meditation in the description. Please use it as a tool and a guide to best help you to strengthen your inward focus and your connection with your inner self. Practicing Asteya helps us to concentrate when we become distracted and to regain the focus we need to choose and attain our goals. Now more than ever, the need to unplug from work, from technology, to wander outside, to move away from your computer and find a peaceful space in which to sit or lie in stillness. 
to exist rather than do. The only distraction may be the urge to open your eyes. Inward focus is about cultivating your relationship with your inner wisdom. Some may call this your highest self, your inner being, the light of your soul, your soul consciousness, and source energy. Think of this as a sacred practice that urges you to go deeper, to find answers that exist within you to be willing to be patient while you quiet your conscious mind and allow yourself to listen to the deeper source of truth or satya that exists within. As you begin to incorporate the attitude of asteya in your life, you begin to see that everything you need is within you. Rather than look outside of yourself, Practice the inner dwelling focus that you experience in mindfulness meditations, in self reflection, and simply to be far more aware of yourself and of your needs and desires. You can choose to stop and go within to listen to the needs of the self and to understand how to meet those needs in a deeper way. For instance, if you feel lonely, Instead of reaching for comfort foods or a nicotine hit, why not lie in the restorative posture of Shavasana for ten minutes? Or go outside and take in your senses with your eyes closed. Observe how you feel. For some, it is an important first step to identify what you are feeling so that you have information in which to make an informed decision based on what you truly need, and then to devote effort to bring this to life. I also want to remind you that feeling lonely or sadness are not feelings that you have to escape from. Often it's when we allow the feeling to be there, and we witness it in its fullest expression that we realize something more. We feel the significance of the emotion without having to run from it or make it go away. In this way, we become more comfortable with any of the emotions we hold, and also with the knowledge that every emotion has a place and a purpose. When you practice going inward and asking for what you need from your highest self, You begin to see how you can fulfill your needs in profoundly the right way. This teaches you that you don't have to make requests or demands on others. Asteya is a state of comfort in knowing that you already have everything you need and the ability to give this to yourself. In the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, asteya is described as the emptiness that is caused by a deep loss, unfulfilled desire, and the resulting lack of insecurity, jealousy, or resentment that we focus onto rather than looking inward, which always guides us to what we can and still need to do to support our well-being and to feel fulfilled, content, peaceful, and joyful. Alice Christensen in Yoga of the Heart writes, The power of non-stealing is based in remembering that everything comes from God. Everything we have is a divine gift, and we can observe it all with wonder, delight, and astonishment. There is no fear of losing anything. In the same way, if everything is at your disposal, you don't feel the need to steal from anyone. A great feeling of peacefulness surrounds a person who knows this. If you have everything, and if you have the ability to have everything, you will never be in need. 
Practicing Asteya reminds us to be grateful for what we have, to be happy with who we are, even as we continue to seek and become more, and to enjoy life as it unfolds in the present moment. The practice of Asteya is to practice mindfulness and meditation with the deliberate choice to cultivate joy from within, to look to the present moment for what you need right now, to continue to deepen your connection with your inner being, and to believe in your ability to have and experience all that you desire, and as you look to your highest self for guidance and wisdom. You feel the wholeness that you are and the significance your life holds for everything imaginable. According to the teachings in the Yoga Sutra 2.37, when we perfect the principle of asteya, riches come to us. Although material wealth may unexpectedly appear when we need it, True spiritual wealth comes when we feel complete and whole with ourselves. We don't need to envy or take from others, whether in their time, their energy, or to seek attention and approval in order to feel good about ourselves. We can rest in the unconditional love and wisdom that resides within us and experience the wholeness of our true self. From this sense of inner fulfillment, we naturally want to give to others rather than to take from them. The more we give to ourselves, the more we easily and freely want to give. The more we give of ourselves, the more riches of all kinds, worldly and spiritual, we are given. And if you've been keeping up with the recommendations for inner reflection that I share at the end of each episode as a deep dive into each yama, I believe that you're going to equally enjoy these ideas for contemplation for the week ahead. First, notice when and how you steal from others this week through time, attention, competition, power, confidence and when you are not able to celebrate others' successes. Notice what is happening in you that prompts this stealing. Practice a stay of first in thought, in focusing on what you can give to yourself in this moment and the next. Practice uplifting others when you speak with them, when they are in your presence and practice uplifting yourself. Second, practice living as a visitor to this world rather than an owner. Notice how much is available to you to use and enjoy without needing to own this. Third, if you are wishing to do and be more, think about your dreams and goals in the week ahead. Make a list of what you need to do, study, learn, develop, commit to that would enhance and increase your personal growth, learning, discipline, and thus bring you closer to your goals and to grow your adhikara, which is a Sanskrit word for the right to know or the right to have. The word adhikara challenges us to the reality that if we want something, then we better grow the competency required to have it. Thank you so much for joining me in this third episode of a series of five on the Yamas. And I always look forward to hearing from you. Drop me a note and let me know how these reflection questions landed and what you've learned about the practice of Asteya, which I hope you will include and continue in for the rest of your life. Sending you great love. This is Dorothy. Namaste. And one final end note to let you know what's up next week. We're going to take a deep dive into the fourth yama, Brahmacharya. 
This word is translated as the right use of one's energy. Join me then. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode of the Wisdom Podcast. To hear more, please check out the other episodes right here. And I'd love for you to subscribe and share your feedback on this or any episode with me. And then join me at DorothyRatusny.com, where you'll find the wisdom blog, the inspiration for this podcast, the latest online courses that I teach, my YouTube videos, and the Wisdom Archives, which are an extensive library of guided meditations, mindfulness musings, spiritual teachings, and best therapeutic practices for your whole being, and to nourish and heal your life, plus many other special offerings of love. Please also visit me on social media and say hello. Allow yourself to go within, to access your inner wisdom, and to live this. Awaken your authentic power, live your truth, and be love. Thank you. This is Dorothy.